Welcome everyone to our Eucharistic celebration of the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Out of respect for the liturgy and those around you, please silence your phones at this time. We continue to honor the COVID-19 guidelines outlined by the Archdiocese of San Antonio in regard to mass and other liturgical celebrations in response to recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We ask that you pay close attention to the directions from our ushers as they will be your guides throughout the Mass, during Communion, and at the end of Mass. The collection baskets for the first collection will be passed out during the preparation of the altar. The second collection will be taken up during the announcements. Thank you for your patience and assistance. Please stand as we begin the celebration. On this feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, to Jesus the Lamb be the glory and the power now and forever. So we sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the King of our hearts, Christ the King of the universe. He may not have an army, but he reigns, and he reigns from a throne of the cross. As we celebrate these sacred mysteries, recognizing the kingship of our Lord, we come before him asking for mercy and pardon. I confess and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord of mercy. Christ of mercy, Christ mercy. Lord, of mercy. Lord of mercy.
Almighty ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. A 
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own? Or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am no a you, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, My kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as we said earlier, we celebrate Christ the King of the universe. But in today's world, speaking of a king, in this modern age, it's not a fitting concept. It's not a fitting notion. For people, it does not make much sense. In the world where we value democracy and multipartyism, also it does not make much sense because the human experience of kingship and kings evokes many negative things in the world than the good. 
It represents some human weakness, pain, and oppression of those who have experienced authoritarianism. In many kingdoms, there were, and in those that remain today, are discriminations, class systems, servanthood, slaves, and the ruled. But then, why do we celebrate Christ as our king if kingship and kingdoms evoke such negative things in the world today? As the king of the universe, we celebrate our Lord because it is the plan of God in his salvation plan to have a king who rules the hearts of the people for the life eternal. In the Old Testament, if we read, we hear God being spoken of as a king enrobed with might and power, able to do anything that he wants to do. But in his plan, instead of having that power to do whatever he wants to do, he gave us his son, whom we celebrate today as the king of the universe. We celebrate Christ Jesus today as the king of the universe, not enrobed with earthly power or the power of this world and majesty, but we celebrate the kingship of his self-emptying. A kingship that comes from his self-emptying. He was God. He self-emptied himself as a son of God in order to have a true service to humankind. He emptied himself with divine majesty to share in our lowliness, in our human weakness, in our sinfulness. He comes to reign not through the power of the sword, but through the mystery of suffering. He rules our hearts through the mystery of suffering. He reigns when he suffers for our sins. He suffers for his people in his kingdom, we, the believers. He stripes away his power each and every day when we sin. He gives up his glory to effectively serve his people. Jesus Christ to us with one clear role and purpose. And that purpose is to fulfill the prophecy and aspirations and hopes of the faithful. And that hope of the faithful is life eternal. His life and work turns earthly concept of power upside down, as we have heard from our gospel today. For he is in the service of truth, and he reigns from the throne of the cross. That's why he says, if my kingdom was of this world, he will have vanquished everything that was against him. But for this he came to the world to suffer for his people, to reign from the throne of the cross, the cross of salvation that witnesses to eternal life by conquering death, in the resurrection, he establishes eternal kingdom for all those who believe and all those hearts that have him in their lives with a great hope to be received into the resurrection of our Lord. His love from the cross cuts through our hearts when we contemplate his mercy that cleanses and makes us heirs of eternal life. As we yearn and look forward to his second coming, we continue to proclaim his unending reign, the kingdom in our hearts with a burning love. We are called to radiate that love to all those around us, that no one should be left behind in the kingdom of God. To live our life and faith with an imminent return of our Lord bearing witness to truth, love, mercy, forgiveness, and sharing in his glory. And as the Lord calls us today, these are the few things that we celebrate today when we say Christ the King of the universe. One, 
we acknowledge and allow Christ to always reign in our hearts. We acknowledge and always accept Christ to reign in our hearts. That's what we say when we celebrate Christ the King of the universe. He is the King of our hearts because we believe in him. And that's why even today you came to church. Because you believe in him. He reigns in your heart. That's the first thing we proclaim. We acknowledge and accept that he always reigns in our hearts. Number two, we have to yearn always to let the throne of the cross to empower us for forgiveness. The throne of the, the cross. That's where he rules from. That's where we draw our masses from. That we must let that throne of the cross to reign and to empower our own forgiveness. Number three, we have to allow his self-emptying of his divinity to grant us humility. How humble are we? If he was God, he self-emptied himself to share in our humanity. He is calling us also that his self-emptying of his divinity should teach us humility in service of others. Humility in service of others. Number four, that his love may overshadow us to expand that kingdom of Christ the King in the universe. That is love to overshadow us to expand that kingdom of Christ the King in the universe. How do we expand that kingdom of Christ? Only one word. Anybody who can guess? It starts with an L. Hello? You expand the kingdom of God by love. Love does not count mistakes. Love does not hate. Love does not. Love prevails. Love forgives. Love understands. Love accepts. We expand the kingdom of Christ, the king of the universe, by? By? Never get weary of loving if you believe in Christ. Never get weary if you believe in the kingdom of Christ. To expand the kingdom of God by loving. If you love, you'll be able to forgive. If you love, you'll be able to serve. If you love, you'll be able to help. If you love, you sacrifice yourself for the other. If you love, you are willing to understand. If you love, you are even willing to be misunderstood for the greater glory of God. Expand the kingdom of God by... May that love of Christ continue inspiring you to proclaim the kingdom to the end of the world.
pictures. He has sent me to heaven, and the seal of God is in the Father. He will come and he will go to church the name of the dead, and he will sing in the Lord and the Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord. that those for the church, that we recognize daily that Christ is King and Lord of all life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who govern nations and guide the, des the destinies of people may follow the example of Christ the King, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a new understanding of authority, that we may recognize God as the source of all authority, and use our authority in cooperation with God's loving plan for humanity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the safety of all travelers, that God will protect all who are traveling this week and help them to have renewing visits with family and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the Catholic campaign for human development, for all who work to address poverty in this country and for our faith community, that we may follow the example of Christ's love and solidarity with those who live in poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. We continue to pray for those who are ill with the coronavirus, that they are healed and that all frontline caregivers remain healthy. And for continuous success of the vaccine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request book, for the souls of our loved ones, for those who have died recently, Jeffrey Rendon, Jacob Martinez, Michael Hoon, Jose del Prado, may God bring them into the fullness of life in his he heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and for the special intentions of this Mass, Chico Cortez and John Cortez and Daniel Medrano, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace a kingdom of peace, love, and unity. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrifice of victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, glorious mothers, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant friends of a Pope Gustav, a bishop, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now we pray to the Father in the words of our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Recognizing Christ as our Savior and our King, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And now, together with our brothers and sisters unable to receive the body of Christ, let us make a spiritual communion with them. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you, never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for a while. Thank you for your assistance with passing the basket for the collection, and thank you for all your support. <coughs> the second collection today is for the Campaign for Human Development. This campaign is run by the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops in the United States. With this collection, your support program, your support, you support programs that address the root causes of poverty and provide a sustainable future for those who struggling across our country. Please prayerfully consider how you can support this collection and those working on the margins. Thank you for your continued support. The Angel Tree is up. Applications for assistance are due by Monday, November the 22nd. Donations are being accepted beginning December the 1st through the 7th. Distributions of these gifts will, begi will begin December the 13th and run through the, the, the 20th. Thank you for your support and contributions. Thanksgiving Day is the, co the coming Thursday, November the 25th. The Paris offices will be closed at noon on Wednesday, November the 24th, and remain closed for the rest of the week. We will, we will have a Thanksgiving Day Mass at 10 a.m. All are encouraged to bring a dish to be blessed as part of the celebration. We wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. There will be an Advent reconciliation service provided on Tuesday, November the 30th, at nine, from 9 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. It's for the St. Luke's Catholic School at 10.30 a.m. 
until 12 p.m. for the parish. An Advent evening recollection service will be held on Monday, December the 6th. Beginning the first week of Advent, daily confessions will be available on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m., not daily. The Bethlehem Nativity Group will be at St. Luke's Church November the 27th and 28th after all masses selling beautiful olive wood carvings from the Holy Land. Bethlehem Nativity Group helps the struggling Christian families of Bethlehem, which makes up less than 1% of the population. Please stop by and offer what you support you can. Today we have a special guest to talk to us about the John Adults Acts Retreat that will take place January the 6th until January the 9th. 2022. Please join me in welcoming our guests. Thank you. Hello, my name is Victor and this is Chloe, and we're here to tell you about our Young Adult Acts Retreat. I attended my first Acts Retreat with St. Luke's Young Adults Ministry in January of 2020. It was an amazing experience that lit a flame in my heart, which allowed me to push through the pandemic. The purpose of an Acts Retreat is to build upon and create a stronger relationship with Christ. This retreat will take place January 6th through the 9th with a fee of 120. The weekend will be filled with faith, fellowship, and fun that will enhance your relationship with the Lord. Registration is open to young women and men that are at least 18 years or older. Applications can be found in the church foyer and the office. If you have any questions after Mass, we will be in the foyer to answer any questions. We can't wait to see you on the retreat. Thank you and have a blessed day. Today we thank Mariano and Josie Chavez, the family who will take home the traveling chalice to pray for vocations. We ask them, please come forward to receive a special blessing. Please refer to your prayers cards and join us in the prayer for vocations. Thank you for your prayers and support to vocations. Let us pray together. God, in baptism, We invite all the visitors to please stand and be recognized at this time for the parish community. All the visitors. Okay, we have visitors here. Let us pray for them. Give them Let us give them a warm welcoming. We invite everyone celebrating an anniversary or a birthday to stand for a special blessing. 
Okay. Birthdays and anniversaries. Okay. Please extend your hands. In the anniversary, there is one. In anniversary? Over there. Oh, okay. How many years? 34. Congratulations. <laughs> Loving God, you created all the people of the world, and you know each of us by name. We thank you for our brothers and sisters who celebrate their birthday and anniversaries today. Bless them with your love and friendship, that they may grow in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I have two seconds before the hour is finished. So, <laughs> our king reigns in our hearts, not from the earthly throne, but from the throne of the the throne of the and they reigns through suffering how do we extend that kingdom I know. through I that's why he came he loved us so much he self emptied himself his divinity to share in our lowliness and his self emptying should teach us humility in service of others and when we are humble, we are able to love and serve others and extend that kingdom immensely. May you extend that kingdom through love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord our King with your lives.